Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this series of videos, I am going to be building the Team Associated RC-10T. And I'm going to be prepping this to race in the uh, National uh, Off-Road Vintage class. And uh, this is one of the original uh, RC cars. Uh, this is based on the original RC-10 Gold Pan. I also am building one of those for the same event. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do any good at it. I'm going to attempt to qualify. I'm going to go and have a good time. That's all I can promise. It's been a long time since I've uh, raced one of these old cars, and there's other guys out there that have had a lot more time to practice up for this event. Um, uh, it's only a few weeks away, um, less than a month, so I'm going to be lucky to get this built and have any time to really practice with the car, but uh, we will see. So. I'm just looking to have a good time and hopefully uh, enough people in my area are getting back into the vintage and we'll have vintage racing throughout the winter at the indoor track and uh, that'll be great for next year as well. So um, the main rule seems to be um, the motor. Uh, the electronics are open so for the electronics I'm going to be running the uh, XE Run XR10 Pro uh, for the ESC. Now that's going to allow a lot of tuning as far as um, braking, punch, how uh, rapidly the power comes on, and that's going to allow uh, for control because um, these cars, I don't know what they're going to let us do as far as tires. I don't know if we're restricted to the stock tires or if we're going to be allowed to run a more modern tire. If we can run a modern tire, that's great. But also the drivetrains on these aren't the strongest. So um, we, uh, we got to be careful about braking things. Um, and uh, so we're limited to a 17.5 motor. So I'm running the uh, a McLaren uh, competition motor. Uh, nothing too fancy, nothing too super fast. It's, McLaren makes good, reliable motors. Um, I've uh, run these on my uh, A-scale uh, touring car, love it. So um, I'm gonna be running these across, same motor across both of the RC10s and a 10 turn on the uh, four-wheel drive uh, buggy uh, that I'm also going to field for the same event. So we'll see. Um, again, I think the ESC is going to be the primary thing aside from suspension tuning. Um, hopefully we are going to be allowed to swap springs and stuff like that. Of course, fluid uh, is going to be allowed. Um, they can't do anything about that. Um, but uh, we may be limited as far as what springs we're allowed to use. Um, screws might be able to use some titanium or aluminum screws. Um, that might lighten things up a little bit. And um, other than that, there's not a lot of uh, modifications that can be done. I don't think there's a lot of performance parts available. These cars are so old. So. Um, The best thing to do is going to be to do a really careful build. Um, use reamers at all of the uh, pivot points. Make sure everything is smooth. Everything works well. Um, there's no binding anywhere in the suspension. Uh, things of that nature. Just a, a good, clean, accurate build. Um, tune the suspension as best as possible and uh, really work the ESC and the slipper clutch combination to make sure that the, uh, the car accelerates well, um, brakes well, and uh, doesn't, um, yeah, you know, doesn't uh, have so much power that it either is hard to control where it, it uh, you know, tries to fishtail when you accelerate or um, 
you know, it's going to break things like, uh, you know, uh, axles and things like that. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to cover the whole build for you uh, and uh, try to cover some testing in the videos and uh, as much of the race as I can. I don't know if they're going to allow us to have cameras at the event. Hopefully they won't have a problem with that. Um, so I'll do as much of that as I can. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this series. Please click like, please subscribe. That really helps me. It's, sorry I've been out of the loop for a little while on videos. I'm gonna to try to get uh, this channel going again at a good pace for you. So uh, please try to support me as much as possible. Thank you. Okay, now um, in the last segment, I did not mention a couple of items. Uh, I did not talk about the, um, the servo that I'm going to use. Um, there's one of my favorite servos is um, the uh, ProTech uh, 160 SS. Uh, it's their super speed servo. That one I'm going to be using on the, uh, the 110. Um, I'm sorry, the uh, the RC10 buggy. And it's got very narrow front tires. I use these uh, a lot on uh, two-wheel drive uh, cars and sometimes on all-wheel drive um, cars, uh, like touring cars. Um, but since this is a, um, a stadium truck, even though it's not all-wheel drive, I'm gonna use their uh, 160T, which is almost as fast as the 160 SS, but it's higher torque. Uh, and that'll put a little more oomph into the, uh, the front tires on uh, this, since the tires are a little bigger and um, give them a little, a little more push. Uh, also, um, the uh, ProTech aluminum arm, it's uh, only about eight or nine dollars. Um, and I got it because I know it's going to fit the servo. It's got uh, two different uh, mounting holes. I rarely use a, uh, a servo saver uh, because, uh, especially with these servos, they are metal gear servo. They're very strong. Um, it's far more likely that something in the suspension is going to break long before anything gets damaged in the servo itself. So I use those also. I went ahead and got a set of bearings. I would almost guarantee that they are not gonna restrict us to using the stock bushings um, with these kits. Uh, now, I did not go with something like a ceramic bearing. First off, I didn't see anybody that offered a ceramic bearing for these. Um, there may be somebody, and uh, you might be able to put together a ceramic bearing kit by buying individual bearings by size. Um, I'm not sure it's really worth it. Might be worth it for uh, like the transmission, but um, and the uh, the outdrives. But uh, I'm not sure if it's really worth it. Um, but a bearing kit in you know a general is definitely worth it. Um, so I went ahead and got it uh, from Fast Eddie. Um, he makes good bearing kits. And uh, so I, um, and no one else at the time uh, that I could find was offering a bearing kit for this. Um, and they also offered a bearing kit for the RC10 and a bearing kit for the uh, Super Dogfighter. And it's interesting, I think it's a nomenclature mistake. Um, he's got it for the Yokomo YZ870C as opposed to the, um, and uh, yeah, it's, he's got it here as 870. In the, in the advertisement, it was 8807C. So I think it's a mistake on the website um, but I went ahead and bought it anyway because the name was the same, the Super Dog Fighter. And uh, now on the package, it does say the correct name. So um, looks like I am set. So I've got a bearing kit for all three uh, of these 
vintage cars. So that's nice. So let's go ahead and open this box and start opening the bags. I'm going to have to start thinking about a color scheme for this truck and uh, get working on a paint job for the body. Might also have to see if I can order wheels separately. One thing that is going to be important with these vehicles is weight. Um, and one thing that can add a lot of weight is a heavy paint job. It's not a ton, but you do like a, a six color paint job and um, using rattle cans in particular versus a um, uh, an airbrush, you can really weigh one of these bodies down. Um, and uh, that's, that's not a good thing. So um, using one or two colors um, and using a bright color scheme, uh, something that really stands out, um, something that's easy to pick out in a crowd of other vehicles, uh, are things that I definitely recommend. So, uh, but you know, that kind of thing is a, is a personal choice. So, you know, you do what you want, but, um, I have always found, and, and when I've, uh, you know, when, I, when I've introduced, uh, friends to the hobby and, uh, they pick out a dark body, you know, something black or charcoal, um, and they're, you know, I was just getting a friend of mine into Mini Z, and uh, he picked out a uh, a charcoal colored Corvette body um, ready set, and uh, I let him go ahead and and you know uh, zoom it around for a couple of days, and then I pulled the body and switched it for a bright yellow Corvette body that I that I had in a. Um, uh, just the, the just the standalone body and so the car was exactly the same and all I did was switch the body and it's the same car just the color was different and he immediately started driving better and faster and he was just shocked because he knew that it was the color because he could see the car better because um, the gray car was disappearing at times against the, the gray Mini Z track, especially, you know, further down track in turns, uh, you know, the further away from him it got, the harder it was to orient it because of that color. And when it's going at speed, um, it, uh, it became just a little harder to see. Uh, and exactly which way it's pointed, you know, is it starting to fishtail a little bit? You know, you know where the car is, but it's like the, it's, orientation became a little difficult. Um, and like I said, that's why I like to do a, a two color, um, you know, but not a massive color, but you know, something like, you know, like cut it in half or do a big stripe or something that helps you, you know, really orient the vehicle. multi-piece wheels. Do they give us any kind of foams with these? Looks like not.
Okay. Servo mount. Steel turnbuckles. We might be able to upgrade these with a titanium turnbuckle. Just got to measure them out. Find a replacement. Here's a, a nice black anodized pan. This is going to be the real tricky one here, the transmission. Um, the original RC10s, um, I think they've upgraded the transmissions for these, but yeah, you see they come with bushings, not bearings. Um, the original RC10s, the, the bearings or the, the uh, idler gears, um, you had to, um, they had three little screws. There were two bearings, one for either side of the transmission. And they had three little screws which held a metal bushing in place. And they were a nightmare to build. Um, and if you, if you tightened the case too much, the transmission bound up. Um, it, it really was almost an art form to build that transmission out and make it run smooth and fast. Because um, I built one of the original RC10s back in the day when they first came out. I, I ordered one, uh, pre-ordered it when they first came out, and uh, I was right on that bleeding edge of RC and... Uh, I remember just, I, I think I rebuilt that transmission twice, three times before I uh, got it right. See like these parts here, um, these are all have, uh, these are all have the swing arms and the pins. Um, all of these things are going to need to have a, uh, a reamer. Uh, run through them. Don't use a drill bit. Um, uh, same thing with these uh, parts here. Um, don't definitely do not um, don't use a drill bit. Get a reamer. Uh, measure the part. Um, as I go through this, I'll tell you what size they are. But. Uh, um, a drill bit is going to take off way too much material and it can uh, offset the hole, um, which is going to throw things off. Um, a reamer is going to give you a much more precise uh, result. And um, you, you want the suspension to be smooth, but you don't want it to have uh, clatter and, and uh, jiggle in it. Beautiful gold anodized shocks. And 30 weight silicon oil.
window masks for left and right and windshield. Some nice stickers. Um, you can use these if you want to. I probably will use very few of these stickers like the you know headlights grill stuff like that um, again it just adds weight I might uh, I might paint a few things like uh, you know um, outline the grill or, and the headlights and just shoot them with a little bit of bright silver um, because they end up peeling off anyway We'll see how much effort I want to put into that. antennas like that I will pretty much be using this type of uh, receiver it's a low latency uh, micro receiver uh, SPM SR 2100 DSMR micro race receiver These uh, these directions are really vintage. I mean, there's very little extra information. I'm going to look at some of these uh, issues that I've discussed, like uh, see if I can find uh, turnbuckles of the same size in titanium. Um, I might look at uh, the ball studs and see if I can replace those with titanium. Um, and. Uh, That would be uh, the extent of it. I think I've got enough uh, titanium and aluminum hardware that I could replace uh, some of the other stuff and some aluminum uh, aluminum nuts that I could uh, replace the steel nuts uh, with aluminum lock nuts. I'll uh, I'll be getting a call tomorrow from someone at the track. I, I left a message, and uh, I'll get uh, some more information on um, whether or not any of these modifications are legal. So we'll find out to what extent the car can be uh, altered, and tires in particular. Yeah, see the 
the hex is an issue. Let's have a look in the directions. There may not be, well, wait a minute. Yeah, see, there's no hex. So you may have to use tires that will fit on these rims. That may be hard to find. I have to go onto a couple of the chat boards and see what's available. Now the front wheels, you can use a lot of different options because it's just a pair of bearings and a shaft. The rear tire though, you're not using like a 12 millimeter hex it's just a pin on an axle shaft and the pin provides, you can see that right there. It's, the pin is going to lock into one of those two uh, directions there. And that's all it's holding it in. And see, that's another reason to kind of keep the power at a reasonable level because you could split that and uh, bust the rim. Well, uh, that concludes this video.